Hi, English 121 students. This is Ms. Douglas Harris, and this is your fifth video for how to write your essay. This video you should be watching on Thursday, September the 10th, and you should be accessing it through your essay document. So you'll go into our Schoology class. You'll go to quarter one. You'll go to week three. You'll go to Tuesday. And then you're going to open the essay number one and the CCR um, rubric. So you need both of these. So I'll click them into different tabs, open in a new tab, and open in a new tab. You'll also need to have your outline open, which is going to be saved in last week's assignment. So you would go back to quarter one, you would go to week two, you would go to Tuesday, and then you would open your outline document or your outline assignment so that you can open your outline. So here's the essay number one and it has your homework listed for each day. This is the homework for Thursday. So the first thing you need to do is read and annotate part three of the interpretation guide. This is housed in this assignment here. So you'll wanna make sure you open that up. I'll open up my blank copy, but you'll open up your primary copy because you're gonna to need to read and annotate the reasoning component. So it's down at number four is what you need to read and annotate. Now that I've opened that, I'm gonna close this tab. I like to reduce my tab so I can stay organized. Then I'm gonna watch modeling video number one, five, um, which you haven't watched yet, and I'm gonna upload it as soon as I'm done recording it because that's what I'm recording right now. And then you're gonna develop the reasoning, reasoning um, interpretation and analysis within your outline. So you go to your outline and you'll open your outline. I'm just gonna open my own outline so that I can model. But you do need to have your outline open and you need to have the new rubric open. So notice that it says writing rubric final essay. You read the outline one last week, which is um, only looking at specific pieces. And this is the complete rubric on which you'll be graded for your full essay, okay? So now I'm gonna start by just reading and annotating the reasoning so that I know what I need to do in order to earn the grade I want. So one, it says I attempt to interpret evidence, but I often summarize it rather than analyze it. So summary means, that I, I am restating, oops, have a double Y in there. I am restating what the quote says, but not offering any new ideas about the quote. Okay, so keep in mind that if all you do is summarize your evidence, you'll get an F for your interpretation. Um, this is a college level course. You're smart people, and I know you know how to summarize. I've seen you do it in your texts. And so you want to make sure that you're moving beyond that summary. So that's the F level. Explanation. I explain what each piece of evidence means. Okay, so I help my reader understand, in essence, to explain it. Explain. I explain what the author is saying so that my reader has the context to understand a text that I have read, but that my reader may not have read. So um, this helps us think about like the argument the author is making or helps us explain the key ideas within the quote. So I might zoom in on a specific word that's a key idea. Um, so that's an example, example. Explaining a key idea that the quote refers to, okay? So now connection, I explain how each piece of my evidence supports my reasons and claim. So I have to connect it to my reasons and claim connection. So it's still explaining, but it's explaining in relation not to the text, but in relation to my reasons. So explain how my evidence proves my reasons, my reason, my evidence should support just that one reason to be true. And if, I'm, if I crafted my claim by using my reasons, if it supports my reason, it will automatically then support my claim. So make sure you've watched that video. That's to get to a C level. Let's look up at the four or at the B level right here. Implications. I need to discuss the impact of the ideas from my evidence. Um, 
that they'll have on real people or the world. So I'm going to say implications. How does, how do the ideas in my evidence impact real people, the real world? Okay. That would be my B level, but I want to be able to reach for an A, so I'm going to read what else I need to include here. Cost-benefit analysis. I discussed the benefits or costs of those implications. So I literally can't do the cost-benefit analysis piece until I've earned the B. So keep in mind that these build. Um, you have to have a D before you can earn a C. You have to have a C before you can earn a B. You have to have a B before you can earn an A. So again, the cost-benefits of the implications I discuss based on my B move. And then personal inferences. I explain my personal opinion of those costs and benefits. Okay. So, um, analysis. What are the costs to real people or the world of the impact? And the impact is what I discussed in my B move right down here for implications. And then um, what are the benefits to real people or the world of that impact? And then inferences, what's my opinion of those costs and benefits? Okay, so these are all the questions I would need to move through in order to earn an A, but I'll build one step at a time, avoiding summary as I go. So here's my outline. I'm gonna go ahead and go down to one of my reasons with my evidence. Now keep in mind, I purposely did not include evidence every single time because I didn't wanna steal thinking from you. So now I'm gonna just delete here and I'm gonna add interpretation. And keep in mind for seriation, all you need to do to add another letter is hit enter. If you want to delete the letter, just hit delete. Okay, so interpretation. The first thing I need to do for my evidence is explain what it means. So let me hop in here and I'm going to start. Oh, each one will need it. Explanation is actually what I'll have first. Right now, this is new to me. I'll internalize it and not have as many little um, seriated letters. But right now, since it's new, I'm going to seriate everything to make sure I have it. So due to neuroplasticity, the brain is able to grow, which means that I can become more intelligent. So I actually already explained the meaning here because I blended it in with my own words. So my quote is actually really small. And then I have my relative um, clause here, which has that comma before it and the relative pronoun which to explain what it means. If the brain can grow, that means I can become smarter. <laughs> um, some con, <coughs> sorry guys. Some context for how it can become smarter though would be helpful for my reader. So I'm gonna add that on. The brain becomes smarter by growing, by um, growing more dendrites that enable more communication between neurons. If I have more neurons, um, then I have more gray matter. So I'm doing a cause and effect here, if then, and I'm gonna do it one more time, um, or actually and with more gray matter. Well, actually, no, I'm gonna stop it here and say, how do I, how do I get my dendrites to grow? And I can grow more dendrites by engaging in challenging um, thinking, okay? So now I've gone on to further develop that explanation here. And notice that I'm paraphrasing information from the text so that my reader can understand what I mean by neuroplasticity and how the brain is growing. So that's my quote and explanation. That means I've earned a D so far on my interpretation and analysis. I want to go now to connection to explain how this evidence supports my reason. So in order to do that, I'll add this connection piece. 
And again, I'm gonna add this after every single quote that I have. So I'll just keep adding it down below. And I'm gonna reread my reason, and then I'll reread my quote and explanation. And then I'll ask myself, how does this quote prove my reason, right? So that's the question I'm asking. How does this quote prove my reason? So I'll capture that here. How does this quote prove my reason to be true? That's the question I'm trying to answer. So I'm gonna reread. I'm gonna start by rereading my reason. While I once failed to believe that I could develop my intelligence, I now believe that I can because neuroscience has proven that the brain can become more intelligent and I am, I am more likely to become successful if I push my own my brain to grow, which compels me to resist the urge to accept my current level of intelligence. Okay, before I do anything, I'm going to point out some errors I saw in your essays or your outlines, and I actually have a couple of them here, so I want to point them out. One is... I have a run-on sentence from here to here. And the reason I have a run-on sentence is because before this coordinating conjunction and, which starts the new idea, I need a comma. So I went ahead and added my comma, and now I no longer have a run-on sentence. Fixed my run-on by adding a comma before my conjunction. Now, one more thing that I don't have an error, but I've seen many errors of this in your essay, is this second comma here. A lot of you guys, I'm so excited to see that you're adopting using the relative clause. It's such a helpful way to explain. However, many of you are forgetting to add that comma before the relative pronoun which. So just make sure that when you're doing your relative um, pronoun and that relative clause, add the comma before which. when using a relative clause, okay? So now I noticed that and I wanted to name for you how to fix those errors. I'm gonna reread my sentence again and again ask myself, how does my quote prove it? So let me reread my reason again. While I once failed to believe that I could develop my intelligence, I now believe I can because neuroscience has proven that the brain can become more intelligent. I am, and I am more likely to become successful if I push my brain to grow, which compels me to resist the urge to accept my current level of intelligence. Okay, so my evidence is talking about the brain growing, which connects to the first half, right? Here, it says neuroscience um, proves that I can become more intelligent. When my brain grows, I'm intelligent. I'm gonna actually write that down before I forget it. I'm gonna take myself off of suggesting and going back into editing. When my brain grows, I become more intelligent. Okay. And then this part is about like why I'm motivated to push myself to grow. And that's really about like, I want to be successful, but this quote doesn't talk about success. So I'm not going to yet connect it to the second half of my reason. I'm just going to connect it to the first half. Um, when my brain grows, I become more intelligent. Also, I want to point out that this is a complex sentence structure that I hope you guys are using. It's complex because you have an idea here, one complete idea. You have another complete idea here. You have a comma separating them, and normally you'd need that conjunction, but since you have this um, subordinating conjunction at the beginning, you don't need it. So this is a complex sentence structure. And you'll wanna make sure you're using those correctly in your writing. So when my, grows, my brain grows, I become more intelligent. Um, I don't actually have to say much more than that, but I might put a little bit of my voice in. Um, which really helps your reader connect with who you are. The fact is that when, and so that phrase, the fact is, I feel like that's kind of a little bit of my attitude being like, this is a fact y'all. And so that's my voice. The fact is that when my brain grows, I become more intelligent. And at the end of the day, again, this is me using my voice. I love gaining knowledge and Hope to always become more and more intelligent. Okay, so notice that this was the meat where I was making that connection. And this then was my voice. So I was adding on. Voice comes in when you think about sophistic sophistication later, okay? All right, now I have an error. I don't know why it wants me to correct it, but I'm going to look at my squiggly. It says to undo. 
I'm going to reread my sentence to see if I'm doing something wrong. The fact is that when my brain grows, I become more intelligent. And at the end of the day, oh, here's my error. I love gaining knowledge and hope to always become more and more intelligent. Notice that the squiggly is now gone. And it was just telling me that my positive here, when I was trying to have a sassy voice, I had the first dashes, but not the second. And so it was telling me like, add your dashes around your positive. All right. So now I have made a connection to my reasons and claim. And now I want to move on to implications for people or the real world. So now I'll add another second section implications. Again, I'm just hitting enter um, in order to add these pieces and I need to do it for every single quote that I have. So this is the most painstaking part of the writing process. Okay, so implication. So now I need to ask myself, how does this fact that we can grow our brains and become more intelligent, how does that impact real people or impact the world? So I'm going to go on to say, um, let's see here. Well, how does it? Hmm. Well, if people, if people know their brains can grow, they're more likely to try to grow them, right? Um, so if people believe that they can become smarter, they might be more motivated to engage in learning. Why would someone try to learn something if they didn't believe they could actually learn it? Now I'm gonna pause here. Notice I have a contraction. I saw a lot of contractions in your writing. These should not be used in formal writing. So instead you wanna say did not. And so you're wanting to make sure that you really avoid that contraction. Avoid contractions. And I expanded mine to avoid it. And so then I asked this question like, why should someone try to learn something new um, if they did not believe that they could actually learn it, right? So it's important that they believe they can. That's an implication for a person. So then I want to go on to my cost and benefit. Like, what is the cost of this implication? What is the benefit? Is there a cost? Um, and what's my opinion of that cost or benefit? So cost, benefit, opinion. Now, keeping in mind that this is, I'm, I'm really trying to earn an A. <laughs> and so I'm adding on each piece and I'm tracking it by adding, hitting enter to add it after each quote. Right now, you might wanna be pushing yourself to a C, right? And then in the next essay, maybe you push to a B. You need to set goals for yourself knowing that you can learn and grow and you only learn and grow if you challenge yourself. So if a C is easy for you, you need to push for a B so that you challenge your brain, so that you grow those dendrites, so that you get smarter. You decide where you are in that continuum. I'm gonna try and push for that, um, for that A level. So now I'm gonna add on to cost benefit. So I don't actually think there's a cost to thinking you're smarter um, or thinking you can get smarter. So I'm not gonna say anything there, but I do think there's a benefit if people, if people believe they can get better, we're less likely to be defensive when we fail. And so as an example, like I, I tried something new recently and I didn't do a great job and I was very upset and I had to remind myself, Stacy, this is the first time you're doing this. You, you have to give yourself time to learn. And so it helped me remember, keep going and helped me remember like I can overcome my challenges and it helped me be nicer to myself because I could accept the failure. Um, and so I think that's a benefit. So if people can accept their learning failures and see those failures as um, evidence that they are challenging themselves, they are more likely to be kind to themselves and others as they confront um, challenges. And the fact is that every person, we will all face challenges for the rest 
of our lives, of our lives. And wouldn't it, uh, and actually, we're all face, so I have to change that. Say, there we go. Um, notice every time I see a squiggly, I look to see why there's an error. Um, the rest of their lives. I believe that we can create a kinder world if we adopt this way of thinking. A kinder and like more supportive, <laughs> like we'll be more supportive to ourselves and others. Create a kinder if we, way of thinking. Notice every time I have a squiggly, I, I look to see what they're suggesting, suggesting as the solution. I read it aloud to see if it makes sense, and then I accept it if it makes sense. If it doesn't, I reread the whole sentence. So now I have done my cost, benefit, and opinion. And so now, hopefully, fingers crossed, I've earned an A. I'm all done with my interpretation for this evidence, but keep in mind, I have to do it for every single quote I have. You don't need to do it for your anecdotes, but you do need to do it for every single quote you have. And you should have quote, quotes from multiple texts, from Hamid, from Delpit, um, from Susa, and from our, our text that we'll engage in on Friday. That's all I have for you guys today, um, and I'll connect with you all later.